Hi all. In today's video, I will illustrate the use of rooks to create double attacks. The rook folk is much easier to find than the other folks, folks by other pieces. So you might find this video very elementary. But the fact is that there aren't too many complications that arise with rook folks. All the puzzles in this video involve looking for two pieces in the same line or aligning them together in the same file or same rank. In this position, it's white to play. Notice that the black king and knight are on the same rank. Rook d8 forks the two pieces. After king h7, rook captures knight, wins a piece. Here again, it's white to play. It is to be observed that black's knight on the edge of the board has limited squares to go to. In fact, it has only one square to go to, which is b8. Imagine what the board would look like if the knight was on b8. White would have been able to play rook d8 and pick up the knight. Thus, white plays bishop b5. After knight b8, we have the perfect setup for the folk. So white plays rook d8 and the knight falls. White can win a pawn here. Can you see how? After knight captures g4 and knight captures knight, white forks the black king and knight with rook g5, regaining his knight and winning a pawn. This position looks very simple, but all these small advantages tend to pile up in the endgame. A pawn in the endgame is quite significant, and it's easy to overlook these kinds of rook forks in your own games, so I thought I'll share this position with you. This time, it's black's turn. Look for loose pieces aligned together. We find that white's pieces on the third rank seem to be susceptible to a rook folk. The white king has to be moved up to the third rank and the black knight has to be moved out of the way. Knight captures bishop solves all of black's problems. After king captures knight, black folks with rook d3. Have a look at this position. It's white to play. Notice that rook e7 would have forked black's king and knight if the e6 pawn was deflected. Hence, white plays bishop captures bishop so that after e6 captures bishop, the e file is open for the white rook to reach e7. Now white is simply up a knight. The same idea of deflecting a pawn in order to make a fork work is used again here. White plays knight captures knight so that black's d6 pawn is deflected, making way for his rook to come to c6. After black moves his queen, white's rook gobbles up the lone bishop on h6. In this position, it's white to play. Rook d8 would have forked black's king and bishop if the rook were off the 8th rank. The e8 rook does another important job of protecting his knight on e4. Thus, the black rook is overworked. He has to defend both his e4 knight as well as his 8th rank. White can take the opportunity to play knight captures knight. Now if rook captures knight, white has rook d8. And if black plays any other move, it's just a free piece for white anyway. Sometimes a simple exchange of pieces has a tendency to make pieces lose. White plays queen captures queen. After the natural recapture, black's minor pieces are both loose and on the same rank. Rook e5 wins one of them. The same theme from black's perspective. Black plays queen captures queen. White responds with rook captures queen. Now black would like to play rook c2 and fork white's bishops, but he can't play it at the moment. First, he will have to chase white's rook away from the second rank. This is easily achieved by bishop b4. Now play would continue as follows.
In the end, black is up by at least two points of material. Mate threads can also be used to pick up loose pieces, since the mate thread has to be addressed first. Here it's black's turn. Notice that white's king has limited mobility. Black's dark colored bishop covers the g1 square and its light colored bishop pins the g2 pawn. So rook h3 would have been mate. Thus white plays rook d3. Now this threatens rook h3. So white has to play king h2 and let his bishop be taken. Check out this position. It's black to play. Again, white's king has limited mobility. Queen captures queen is tempting for black, but not very fruitful. Consider rook f2. This threatens rook h2 mate, so white cannot play queen captures queen. I put this position in Ripka to see white's best continuation from here, so I'll quickly run through the moves. Now black ends up at least four points of material ahead and with a superior position. What would you play here as white? Black is threatening to play pawn to f2, which would fork the white rook and knight. Black's highly advanced pawns could get dangerous at some point of the game, so something has to be done about them. Notice that rook e8 would have forked black's king and bishop if the e4 pawn were deflected. Thus white doesn't hesitate to play knight captures f3, because if e4 captures knight, white has rook e8. In this puzzle, it's just a matter of alignment. White plays rook d8, check, forcing the king to f7, after which rook d7 wins black's light-colored bishop.